Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another of my Archive 5 videos. So today we are doing AuthorTube and BookTube tags. So if you've seen these videos before you know what to expect. Basically it's five unreleased videos all sort of wedged back to back. I'll put the timestamps below and also on the screen here so you can skip in if you just want to see, you know, just one of them. And uh, yeah, so today we are going to have the Writing Habits tag, the BookTube Newbie tag, the Unpopular Opinions tag, the I Messed Up tag, and the Would You Rather tag. So without further ado, let's get going. I will hand you over to Old Dane. Here you go. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to be taking the Writing Habits tag. So I've actually taken this tag before in the past, so here's some footage of that. Um, it, here, this is, I mean, let me just pivot you. Here we go. There's my computer. We're on my computer desk. I just tend to sit here and, you know, write. Now, unfortunately, the original video of this tag has since been deleted, so I don't actually know who made it. However, we're going to do it anyway. There are 12 questions I'm going to answer, and then I'm going to tag three people. It's pretty much as per, as per usual. So, question one, typed or handwritten? So for me, I type the vast majority of my stuff, although I still handwrite poetry and my journals and some flash fiction as well. I do a different piece of flash fiction each day. I used to write everything by hand. My first couple of books, um, No Rest for the Wicked and Formerly, both of those were written by hand and then typed up and then kind of edit it as I type it and then I edit it again and go through the editing process with an actual editor and all that kind of stuff. However, basically that just took so much time and it was taking me so long to write books that I realized I had to switch to typing because otherwise I'm, I, my output like tripled as soon as I switched to typing and to be honest I feel kind of mad that I wasted so much of my time when I was younger writing by hand. Question two, cursive or printed? Printed, I think. I don't know. Is cursive the same as joined up handwriting? Is that is that what we call cursive here in the UK? I write like this. I mean, is that cursive or is that printed? What is that? Question number three, show us your favorite pen. Now, actually, I don't really have a favorite pen. That said, I do have two that I, I'm quite partial to. Now, the problem with pens, I am a total liability when it comes to pens. I actually used to steal pens from work, not meaning to, because what would happen is I would, like, I'd go out for a cigarette and take my pen and my notebook, and then I'd put the pen and the notebook back in my pocket, and then next time I went for a cigarette, I'd pick up another pen, and I'd end up coming home with, like, 20 pens or whatever. <laughs> I lose them a lot as well. I put them through the washing machine, they leak and all of this stuff. I do have this really nice, it's not a Parker pen, but it's a Parker pen knockoff um, and it's branded the Sunday Times and that was given to me in the goodie bag from the Young Writer of the Year Awards event which is in one of my videos if you would care to check that out however I am quite proud of these pens there you go so yeah I'm quite proud of these pens I have a whole box of them do you want to see the box I'm still blurry like I'm serious I have a whole box of them Does anyone want a Dane Cobain pen, by the way? These are free if you buy one of my books from me and you get the signed copy. Question number four, where do you like to write? I sit down here with my feet up. Let me type something, listen. I, I type quite quickly as well. Let me type, I type quite quickly as well. So I just sort of sit here. Question number five, who are your five favorite authors in terms of authorial style? That is a very difficult question, I think, because that five as well. Okay, so all for very different reasons, but one would be Charles Bukowski, Stephen King, because he does a great job of getting inside his characters' heads, and in terms of the way they talk, even their dialogue, I think he nails it with the dialogue and really brings them to life through like phonetically the way that the phrases are, are spelled. Terry Pratchett, because there's a little hint of the surreal there, but I always feel like Terry Pratchett's writing is like, it's been written with a little glint in his eye. And you can tell that in the way that it's written. And I just, I wish I could emulate that, but I am not Sir Terry, unfortunately. JK Rowling's gotta have a shout out here. Not because, because this is specifically about writing an authorial style rather than plotting. And obviously she's a master at plotting and world building. But actually I like her writing style just in terms of it's very functional. It's like, it, it doesn't overcomplicate itself and it doesn't talk down to people. And that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why you can read the Harry Potter books whether you're 12 or whether you're 80, 
is because of her writing style. Her writing style just carries the story and fades into the background. One more, one more. It's probably just gonna be Graham Greene because Graham Greene is one of the authors I've read the most of. And I don't know what it is about his style that I like. I just like his writing, to be honest. I think it's very nice. Question number six, what are your three favorite books on writing? Well, On Writing by Stephen King would be an obvious one, but I actually haven't got around to that. My three favorite books on writing. I don't even know if I have three books on writing. One of them would have to be uh, Shrunk and White, The Elements of Style. Possibly um, Lynn Truss, Eat, Shoots and Leaves. I should have collected these books, but I didn't realize this was a question. And one last book. It would just be a random Bukowski book because Bukowski writes about writing. Unless we go for Misery by Stephen King. Question number seven. Have you ever competed in NaNoWriMo? No. And I fair play to people who do do it, but for me, I write year round anyway, so NaNoWriMo would put undue pressure on myself during that month, and then I think it would damage my flow of writing in the months on either side of it. Question eight. Have you ever won NaNoWriMo? No, because I don't participate in it. Question number nine. Have you ever had anything published? Yes. Now, self-publishing is obviously a thing. I self-publish the majority of my books, but um, No Rest for the Wicked and Eyes Like Lighthouses When the Boats Come Home, those are my first two books, a supernatural thriller and a poetry collection. They were both published by Booktrope Publishing. So Booktrope closed their doors and then No Rest for the Wicked was put to, picked up by a Dragon Moon Press, which is who that's published by now. And the rest of my books are currently self-published, but I'm looking for a new home. Question number 10, what projects are you working on now? I've just finished Driven, my detective novel, so this has been, well I mean I haven't just finished it, it's in the process of being released, so all the work on it is finally done and it's just gone to print and I'm waiting for it to arrive basically, and this will be released on Saturday the 28th of January. I'm also working on various other projects, so Driven is book one in a series of these cosy detective novels but with a kind of quirky technological twist. And books two and three in that series have writ been written, so they are going through editing. And meanwhile, my primary project is I am writing a novel that's set on a factory farm, and it's called Meat. And I can't tell you too much about that right now, because it's all top secret. And also, I don't actually know. There's a big chunk between the middle third, the middle third and the ending that I haven't planned out yet, so I don't know how that's going to go. But that's on about 45,000 words at the moment, and I'm a little less than halfway through, so I'm excited about that one. Question number 11. What is your soundtrack to writing? Honestly, I just listen to YouTube. What have we got at the moment? I almost always, when I film these, I'll have YouTube on the TV pause. So. Between the World and Me by Donna Hopkins. This is Penguin Random House on YouTube, so that's why he's edited it. Question number 12. Do you have a writing pump up song? Not really, I'm afraid, no. Um, I don't have a pump up song in general. So, I'm now going to tag people. So, I'm going to tag basically anybody on Booktube who is also an author. But in particular, I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian. And Madman Reads and Rocks. Because I'm pretty sure all three of you are also writers in your spare time. But like I say, if you're an author, please do take this tag and let me know about it as well. I'll come and check it out on your channel. In the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a comment to let me know what you think about this video and the answers that I gave. And in the meantime, I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi guys, Dane here. And today I'm gonna to take the booktube newbie tag. So this tag was created by Brenda C. And full disclosure here, I'm not even sure that I'm still a booktube newbie. I mean, I've been doing it for a couple of months now and I did it on a different channel before then, sort of at least. And uh, I've had my YouTube account for ages, but what the hell, we're gonna do it anyway. In part because this is kind of like the tag that you need to do. But yeah, I wanted to do this tag because I think it's a great way to introduce you, I guess, to my channel if you're new to me or if you haven't subscribed and you're thinking about it. And also, let's be honest, the questions look fun, so let's do it. Right, question number one. Why did you start this channel? So I guess this has like two answers really because I first made this channel in like 2006 because this was this hot new video platform that everyone was talking about and the first video that's still on my channel is actually like I don't own the copyright of it. It's part of a TV show of a comedian called Dave Gorman who I was really into at the time and probably still am to be fair. Um, 
but I've used the channel for all kinds of stuff throughout the years. As for why I started making booktube videos on this channel, I mean, I've always watched booktube. I used to actually watch booktube videos uh, when I was at work, when I used to work for a marketing agency, so I'd have my headphones on. But I never really took part in the community. I think a lot of it was because I was at work, so I'd watch videos, but I never used to comment. I'd just let a playlist run through and watch a bunch of videos. And then I started working from home, and that gave me more of an opportunity to start commenting on videos and talking books and all that kind of stuff. And meanwhile, while all this was going on, I was, you know, I was commenting on people through this channel because it's my main channel and what I used to watch people. And I also have a second channel, which is my book blogs YouTube channel. So I run a book blog called socialbookshelves.com and I launched that in 2014. And I posted occasional booktube videos there and that kind of all pretty much dried up. And the only thing I was still doing was my haul videos. And for some reason I decided to post, I think it was my October haul video on this channel as well as on my other channel. And it just suddenly got like four times as many views and like people commented on it, including people who I subscribe to and who I watch their videos. And it was a bit of an epiphany for me, really. I realized that I kind of, although I was kind of, I guess, on the outskirts of the community, there was no reason why I couldn't just, you know, dive right in. And again, I really love books. I write in my spare time, so it's kind of natural for me to be making booktube videos. But just the fact that I did upload that one video and people responded really well to it and were really encouraging, that was kind of the catalyst that made me think, right, I'm going to do this properly and turn my channel into a booktube channel and change the name to Dane Reads and all this stuff. Question number two, what are some fun and unique things that you can bring to booktube? I think I have quite a varied reading taste, quite eclectic. I also read a lot as well. I'm a writer, so I bring that kind of point of view. I think there are lots of smaller factors. You know, I'm a male, and I guess males are less represented on booktube. I don't read a huge amount of YA. I read, you know, a certain amount of it. I'm British as well, whereas I know there are a lot of Americans. The great thing about booktube actually is that there are people all over the world though, so there are like Australians I watch and Dutch people and few living in Japan, they're not actually Japanese, that's my next goal. I also want a Welsh YouTuber because I've got England, Ireland and Scotland like multiple times but I don't have any Welsh people and I love the Welsh accent as well so, so I need somebody Welsh talking about books so if you know anyone please let me know. Question number three, what are you most excited for about this new channel? Admittedly again because I've been doing this for six weeks, two months now, something like that so I've kind of been able to settle in a bit more and the things I found most exciting are buddy reads. So far I've done a buddy read with Todd the Librarian. I'm also currently reading, where's it gone? I think I left it somewhere, but I'm currently reading June by Frank Herbert and that's with three other people. I'm going to be buddy reading City of Ashes with Kit Kats Can Read. There's some talk about buddy reading Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. And these are kind of all books that I did plan on reading anyway, but it definitely is going to push me to read them faster. It'll be great to have people to talk to about it as well, um, particularly kind of during while, while you're reading it. And um, yeah, I think that's my, my what I've enjoyed most so far. Question number four, why do you love reading? I mean, that is a very difficult question to answer. I don't know, I think it makes it makes a part of who I am. I guess, like I'm a, I've just always been a big reader. I think my family have always been big readers as well. I probably read more than they do, I guess. I mean, again, because I'm a writer, it's just important to read. I just like getting lost into, you know, my own imagination. I also like learning things, so I like non-fiction for that reason. But equally, I think an underrated aspect to reading fiction books is that you do learn stuff as well. And it also kind of introduces you to new ways of thinking. So, for example, if I read a book with a black main character, for example, then that opens up a window to, you know, a, a life that I haven't lived. There's there's that George R.R. R. Martin quote where he says, uh, a man who reads lives a thousand lives, a man who doesn't read lives only once. And I think that's very true. And I appreciate being able to live other people's lives and see the world through their eyes. I think it's important. And I think if more people did that, the world would be a better place. Question number five, what book or book series got you into reading? So I guess there are a few. I mean, my generation, obviously, Harry Potter was a big influence. On top of that, the uh, Philip Pullman, His Dark Materials trilogy, that was a big influence on me. That's probably what really made me fall in love with reading. Terry Pratchett's Discworld series. Um, there are lots, and there are lots of individual ones as well. Even like the Star Wars Expanded Universe books, I used to read quite a lot of those when I was kind of 11, 12 or something, which, you know, I always used to read quite advanced books for my age. 
I read Oliver Twist when I was about nine, I think, and really enjoyed that. Question number six, what questions would you ask your favorite booktuber? Now that's difficult because really to answer that, you need to answer who your favorite booktuber is. And I don't know if I have any particular favorite. I think the perennial question I would ask most of them actually, and it's quite a specific one, it's what, what is your editing software? And actually, for those of you who are watching and who make videos, please leave a comment and let me know what editing software you use. Question number seven, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? I think the main challenge is just keeping that motivation if it feels like nobody's paying attention, but I feel like people are paying attention and you know, I, I do really appreciate it, so thank you. Would anybody like a traditional mocktail sweet, by the way? Anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. If you're new to my channel or new to BookTube, please do hit subscribe if you want to see more. Leave a comment as well so I can check out your channels because I'm always looking for more people to subscribe to. And thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye. All right, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm doing the unpopular opinions tag. I've actually done this tag in the past, so here's old me doing it. Basically, there's a set of questions, we go through them, and I reveal my unpopular book opinions. Let's go. This tag was created by The Book Archer, and I will leave a link to the original video below. And as usual, it's a series of questions that I'm gonna answer, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna tag three people to take this if they haven't already. So without further ado, let's get started. Question one, a popular book or series that you just didn't like? Well, for me, that is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I've kind of talked about this a fair amount on my channel. I, I just hated the characters. And if you hate the characters, it's very difficult to actually care about what happens to them. So I really just, I didn't like Gone Girl and I didn't really understand what all the hype was. However, I have since read uh, The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn and I kind of enjoyed that. So I might give some more of her work a chance. Question number two, a popular book or series that everyone else seems to hate but you love? Now, I don't know. I couldn't I couldn't think of a good answer for this one, mainly because I think I don't I don't think I don't tend to pay too much attention to other reviews and that kind of stuff. So I don't necessarily hear if it, people don't like a particular book or series. However, I would say for me it's mostly something that I love that other people are completely indifferent about and haven't even heard of and a lot of indie authors would fall under that category. All of that said, I couldn't think of a decent answer for this, so I'm gonna use my, my pass and not answer this one. Question number three, a love triangle where the main character ended up with the person you did not want them to end up with, or an OTP that you don't like? I'm not really one for OTPs and all of that kind of stuff, and I don't really pay attention to the love elements of books, it's just not my thing. However, I do think Harry should have ended up with Luna, because Luna Lovegood is the one. Question number four, a popular book genre that you hardly reach for? YA. I mean, I read it every now and then if it's convenient. Maybe I'll pick up the odd book from a charity shop, but I definitely don't go out of my way to read YA in the same way that everyone else does. Question number five, a popular or beloved character that you do not like? The kid from A Monster Calls. I already can't remember what that kid's name was, but I just didn't like him. I mean, I kind of felt all, the, all throughout as though he was basically using his mum's cancer as a reason to act out, as like an excuse to do it, knowing he wouldn't get punished. Question number six, a popular author that you can't seem to get into. For this, I've gone for Scott Westerfeld. Specifically the Uglies series, I read the first book and I just, I didn't think much of it. It was kind of a throwaway book for me, you know, and never wanted to read the rest of the series. I have read Zeros, which he co-wrote with two other people, and that was actually quite good, but I think that might be because he co-wrote it with two other people, and they were quite good. Question number seven, a popular book trope that you're tired of seeing. Examples include Lost Princess, Corrupt Ruler, Love Triangles, etc. So for this one, I think it would be uh, narrators that lie to the reader. It just really bothers me. I, I just don't like books like that. I feel as though I've wasted my time with a book, especially if you're not expecting it and then it just later turns out that the narrator did lie to you it's just like well for me that act of the narrator lying to the reader breaks the suspension of disbelief and right makes me realize that it is fiction and it just throws me out of the story and then i just 
you know, I don't, I tend to not want to finish it after that happens. Question number eight, a popular series that you have no interest in reading. So for this, Fifty Shades of Grey, I mean, it's just not my thing. I have no intention of seeing the movie either. I think I did pick it up and try to read some of the first book ones and it, I was put off by the writing and I hadn't even got to the part that I'd been warned about where it's just like all of these long technical, well, not like contracts and stuff. I just, uh, I mean, I've read decent erotic fiction and Fifty Shades of Grey is not that. <laughs> Question number nine, the saying goes, the book is always better than the movie, but what movie or TV show adaptation do you prefer more than the book? Now this might come as a surprise, but it is The Shining by Stephen King. Now obviously The Shining, the movie, is actually a masterpiece. I mean, it, this is actually a movie tie-in cover, I guess, isn't it? With, uh, and obviously in the film, you've got Jack Nicholson playing um, Torrance, Jack Torrance. Yeah. Oh, they're both called Jack. I never realised that. For me, The Shining was my first Stephen King book and it just took me ages to get into it. I didn't really enjoy it that much and uh, it kind of put me off his work, but I really do like the film. And then I kind of came back to Stephen King later on and then fell in love with him. I'm actually planning on rereading this book in 2018 as part of Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. So again, I'll try and link to some info about that below. Basically, I think maybe if I were to reread it now, my outlook on it would be different because I'm more used to Stephen King's style. But for now, I am going to say this is my adaptation where the movie was better. And so we come to the tagging. So I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian, Graham Quigley as well. And Between Lines and Life. Wasn't planning on tagging Between Lines and Life, but she's literally just subscribed to my channel while I'm filming this. So I figured, why not? We'll tag you. So uh, yeah, there we go. And if you didn't do this back in the day and you want to do it, obviously feel free to do it. And if I tagged you and you don't want to do it, don't do it. BookTube is all about fun at the same time though. it is The reason I tag people all the time is because I like to then, you know, showcase their channels as well. So I think it's a you know, tagging people and then doing those tags, I think is a great way of boosting that community vibe. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, let me know which of these books and choices and questions and answers and all that kind of stuff you most identify with. Let me know which ones you least identify with as well. Let's argue, not argue, let's debate. Let's have a healthy debate. Healthy debate in the comments. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do the I Messed Up tag. So this was created by Is That Shammy, I think that's how you say her name, and I'll link to her video and her channel below. I actually did this in the past as well, so here's some footage of slightly younger Dane doing this. I think this is about, um, right, oh yeah, the context. The context of this, I think... Is. And as usual, as this is a tag, there are a set of questions, there are eight questions, and then at the end I'm going to tag three people. So if you're ready, let's go. Question one, a character appearance that you misread and imagined differently. So for me, this is Dobby. I was actually having this conversation with my girlfriend recently. Now, we all kind of know about Dobby now because we've all read the books, but that first ever time when you're reading Chamber of Secrets and he keeps injuring Harry and he's giving him all these warnings and stuff, you never know whether Dobby's a good guy or a bad guy. And I actually just assumed that Dobby was a bad guy at the time. You know, I've never been so wrong. <laughs> Question number two, a character name that you've been pronouncing wrong. I don't know because if I, if I knew I was pronouncing it wrong, I'd correct the way I pronounced it. However, I did used to pronounce Hermione, Hermione. I don't think I was the only one. I think I actually learned that from somebody else. Their bad habits. Question number three, an overused trope that is your guilty pleasure. And for me, I think this is any kind of hard drug use like heroin or like methamphetamine or something like that. I don't know, I think with those drugs that will, can literally kill you just by taking them, I think it adds an extra sort of sense of tension. Question number four, a cliche character type that you like better on screen than reading about. So I struggled with this one. And then I thought, we're going to go for the hot popular girl, because at least if they're on screen, I can look at them. If you're going to have a hot popular girl, they tend to have awful personalities, you know, but at least on a screen, you can look at them. Question number five, a word or phrase that you learn because of its use in a book. This, for me, would be sending people to Coventry, and it means to ostracise somebody or to kind of make them a social outcast. And I first read this in a poetry collection, I believe, 
and Googled it. And then immediately after that, about a week or two after that, I read it somewhere else as well. And so it's just stuck in my mind. Question number six. Have you ever not read or completed a required reading book for school? Yes and no. I mean, we did actually, at university, we had a lot of required reading books that weren't actually required reading and nobody checked whether you read them or not. And so nobody did, like the whole class just didn't read them. The only one that I can think of to really answer for this is I did a London and Literature module and for that we really did have to read each of the books and it was a book a week for 12 weeks I think, something like that. And I really struggled with Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf so I had to end up listening to it on an audio book but I still got it done in time. <laughs> Question number seven. Have you ever or wanted to skip a chapter from the point of view of a character that you weren't interested in? So I've never skipped a chapter, because that's kind of not how reading works. However, I have kind of wanted to from time to time when reading Game of Thrones. Certain characters I just don't particularly like, and obviously the way Game of Thrones is structured, each chapter or each section follows a specific character. So if you don't like that character, you know you're stuck with them for like the next 80 pages and you're just like, ugh. Question number eight, have you ever cancelled social plans to read a book? So I haven't done this specifically, but I have done this, if that makes sense. I haven't specifically cancelled social plans to read a book, but I've cancelled social plans because I have anxiety disorder and quite often I get scared about leaving the house. And then I end up distracting myself with the book. So in a roundabout way, I have done this. So that's it. Those are the eight questions. Again, this is a nice, quick, fun one to do. And I am going to tag Harriet Rosie, Todd the Librarian, Graham Quigley as well. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment to let me know which answers you agreed with and whether you disagreed with them. If you take this tag, let me know. And in the meantime, I will see you soon for some more bookish stuff. Yay. All right, bye. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to take the bookish would you rather tag. So, the original of this tag was by Ray K Books back in the day. There's actually some footage of old me doing it, which we'll put here. Good question, but it's not too hard for me to choose that one. I'd go for standalones, just because you get a, a greater variety, I suppose. And so yeah, I just thought I'd bring this tag back from the dead and take it for a second time. So this has got 10 questions. I'm going to go through and answer each of those questions. And then at the end, I'm going to tag three people. Now, obviously, Obviously because it's the would you rather tag it's 10 would you rather questions I think we can blitz through this pretty quickly don't you question one would you rather read only trilogies or standalones standalones for sure I I mean I do have a favorite trilogy and my favorite book is the first book of a trilogy but at the same time in terms of what I read now it's definitely more standalones and even things like Stephen King. I want to read all of Stephen King's backstory. Question number two. Would you rather read only female or male authors? I don't generally consider the gender of the authors that I read. So even thinking about it now, I'm struggling a little bit. I reckon I, reckon I would go for female authors. Not necessarily because of the books that I've read and that I enjoy reading at the moment. Or because of any... I don't know, preconceived gender uh, uh, like split, but purely because from what I see, especially amongst the indie com My phone's ringing. So especially amongst the indie community, a lot of the really talented up and coming writers that I'm seeing are female writers. And I think to limit myself to just male authors, it might give me a great bank of kind of archive back catalog historical books to look at. But in terms of new releases, if I can only read male authors, I think that's going to scupper me for the future. Question number three, would you rather shop at Barnes & Noble or Amazon? Amazon. I don't even know if we have Barnes & Noble in the UK, but I very rarely go to bookshops. When I do, it's secondhand bookshops and charity shops that sell books. And you can usually get books for, uh, you know, really great prices there. Whereas when you're looking at bookshops, I would rather just buy used online. Question number four, would you rather all books became movies or all books became TV shows? I am going to say all books became movies because otherwise I'd never have a chance at watching all the ones I wanted to do if, you know, if all books became TV series, especially because they tend to carry on to like season four, season five, etc. I need it to be over in like an hour and a half so I can watch it and move on with my life. Question number five, would you rather read five pages per day or five books per week? 
five books per week. I'm not that far off it. I think in my one of my recent wrap ups, I did like 13 or 14 books. So that's what four books per week. So I'm not far off. And also you can read lots of like really thin books. Question number six. Would you rather be a professional reviewer or author? Why not both? But if I have to choose professional author, I mean, it's always been my dream. It's something that I'm actively working towards and have been for the last 10 years. At the same time, I think that reviewing is actually a it's part of marketing myself as an author. People know me as a reviewer and then read my books and vice versa. So, you know, I think it's win-win. Question number seven. Would you rather only read your top 20 favorite books over and over or always read new ones that you haven't read before? Now, I would rather always read new ones because that's pretty much what I do anyway. I very rarely reread and when I do, it tends to be through an audio book. So I'll read the book first and then I'll listen to the audio book afterwards. I never listen to the audio book before reading the book. And to be honest, I very rarely listen to audio books. I tend to just focus on constantly reading new books and finding new ideas. That said, I'll read multiple books by the same author. So question number eight, would you rather be a librarian or bookseller? I guess it'd be a bookseller because I don't lend books. Like, I just don't lend books. Question number nine. Would you rather only read your favourite genre or every genre except for your favourite? I'm going to say every genre except for my favourite because I don't really have a favourite genre. I guess my favourite genre would probably come under like classics maybe. So, I could live with that. Question number ten. Would you rather only read physical books or only read ebooks? Only read physical books, that's what I do. I collect all of my books, I have over a thousand books and I have no interest in e-readers. I, I like keeping my books afterwards as kind of display items. So there we go, that was the would you rather tag. I'm gonna tag three people to take this tag, but equally, if you didn't do this back in the day and you would like to do it, please do. And if I've tagged you and you don't wanna do it, that's fine too. It's really just a way of me giving you guys a shout out. So I'm gonna tag Todd the Librarian, Catalyst Reads and Mindy's Book Journey. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a comment to let me know whether you agree or disagree with my answers. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.